All right, continue this uh, video series on how to build mass started with a real basic uh, approach. And, uh, approach being, you know, make sure we have all our bases covered. So we're gonna talk about training volume in this video, but here's the deal. This is like the topic everybody wants to know about. How much should I do? If It doesn't really matter if your nutrition isn't on point. I mean, it matters a little bit, but don't forget those things I talked about first is what I'm getting at. You gotta check bark, you know, check box all these things. You could say, well, I'm not seeing progress. I'm trying to push my volume up. Well, you probably can't push your volume up like you should because you're not sleeping properly, your nutrition's off, right? You could be doing more volume than you are, but you can't, so you're not seeing progress. You, you, know, you might be doing more volume, you're trying to, but you're not recovering. Uh, familiar with Dr. Mike Isretel and, and Renaissance Periodization. I happen to be a diet coach for Renaissance Periodization, bias alert, but Dr. Isretel, a uh, brilliant guy, he's put words to all these things I'm gonna talk about. I'm not gonna take his words, but do be aware of them, like maximal recovery volume, right? So, you know, you might be beyond your maximal recovery volume if you try to up your volume and you're pulling calories back, maybe in a cut, or you're just not eating. Like you think, oh, I'm doing pretty well, but you know, you're not really providing uh, the macro and micronutrients needed in order to see muscle growth as a result of your training. And so you've extended yourself beyond that uh, maximal recovery volume, and now you're actually working against yourself. You're wasting time. Um, you may even be getting in a catabolic state and working. We know that you can go beyond that. You actually inhibit, potentially, uh, from the research literature, you inhibit muscle growth. So there's a there's this happy little bandwidth we live in between, you know, the minimal effective volume, as these are all doctors would tell us words, and maximum recovery volume, right? And we want to, you know, find and live in there. We might bounce around in it, and it's going to change. And that's what makes volume prescriptions difficult is, well, what should I do? Well, the best thing to do, I mean, you can start with some of the basic things, like, you know, the general recommendations, that one to three sets, like the American College of Sports Medicine, right, all those things. Those aren't bad, but understand where you are now, okay? So if you are starting out and you haven't done anything, then one set is gonna get the job done. One set of six, you know, not to failure, would get the job done, because it's something. You haven't been doing anything, you move to something. If you've been training for a while and you, and you really are honest and look, look at your volumes that you've been using, you might find that you've been stagnated and you didn't even realize it. You know, you've been doing uh, you know, um, a total of 80 repetitions or eight sets a week on a particular body part movement pattern. Uh, and you've been doing that, you've been changing the exercise, you've been doing all this other stuff, but you haven't seen progress. Well, it's because you haven't increased the volume. It looks, it appears that from the research literature, it's all about volume. Now we're assuming that you're going to the same reps to failure, um, but, and there isn't a, there isn't a lot of research uh, on this yet, but the research that's there by Dr. Schoenfeld in particular is compelling that, you know, when you, equal the volumes between, you know, I'm going to use an example here, eight sets of three or three sets of eight, you get the same uh, hypertrophy as a result. And we've seen that with different percentages all the way down to 30% that you can get hypertrophy as a result of this type, uh, a result of using the proper loads that say two sets of failure, um, or two reps of failure, excuse me, um, you know, done with that volume. So it could be a 30 RM or it could be a 10 RM as long as the volumes are the same. So that would reduce or increase the number of sets in order to get the same volume you get the same hypertrophy as a result of that, okay? Around, again, it appears that 30% is the, the basement of that. The good news is then you can train all the way through the spectrum of rep ranges, you know, from uh, potentially uh, even singles all the way up to 30 RM. Now, here's the deal though, when you start to select some of those volumes and configure your sets and rep schemes. Obviously, if you're gonna do 30 repetitions of an exercise and you do singles at 95%, you're gonna get fried really quickly, neurologically. You're not gonna be able to complete that workout, at least not with 95% of the load. You can keep doing singles, but you're, the load is gonna start coming down. You're gonna accrue fatigue rapidly. So on paper, yes, you could get the same amount of hypertrophy even 30 singles uh, with two to fail, but that type of activity, as you know, if you've lifted, you know that's heavy. And so that's going to wear you out faster. Uh, and it's gonna inhibit your ability to perhaps do more volume later in the week in that same body part. Or, you know, again, if you did maybe 15 reps and you're gonna do 15 reps later in the week, uh, it's gonna ruin, it's gonna significantly affect the quality, like I mentioned, the load that you're using during these sets. Um, it's going to reduce that. And so, you know, there's some wisdom to be used when you're selecting a rep range. The closer you get to a 1RM, the closer you get to strength type of work as well. So, you know, if you're, if you're a, a an athlete of some sort trying to gain mass, you may not just want 
to gain mass as a bodybuilder with high, and you don't want to do 30 rep sets. You want to do things that would maybe be more on the strength end of the continuum. So you might do sets of six, right? And so, you know, however many, you know, six repetitions. And so you would calculate roughly what would be a load that gets you two to fail, uh, you know, roughly in that six rep range. And that's how many sets you would do in order to get maybe 30 repetitions. If that makes sense. And so instead of doing three sets of 10 or, you know, two sets of 15, that may not be a good idea if you're also trying to gain mass and gain strength at the same time. So, you know, and, and there's value in doing those high rep things for other reasons, metabolic reasons, the high growth hormone response, all those type of things in order to prepare the body to do heavier loads. But what I'm saying is, you know, when we look at this volume thing, it's actually quite simple, uh, you know, in terms of hypertrophy, more volume equals more hypertrophy. How you assign that volume though, is where you have to use a little bit of wisdom. Um, so again, I mentioned the athlete, you might want to be in a higher sets, lower rep type of situation. Therefore the weight is a little heavier in order to also get some strength gains. If you don't, you say, I don't care about strength gains. I just want to get super big, jacked and awesome. Okay. Then you could drift up into these higher rep ranges. You might only end up doing two sets with these higher ranges of repetitions and you'll get the same hypertrophy. Now, the good news is when you take the load down, like I mentioned, you can do more volume potentially at the load that's you know appropriate for that particular repetition range that you're trying to hit now i'm not trying to get too excited about the rep ranges because you know we tend to add more sets now that tends to be the trend and that tends to be a good thing is just add more sets with two to fail so whatever you know that set that you need to add in there around two to fail you pick a load that you know you're trying to shoot for a rep range but it's still two to fail it's a you know the, the intensity of the set is two to fail the intensity of the set is one to fail the intensity of the set is to fail and so, you know, that might range you up to 20 repetitions and, you know, maybe the next week you get 22 repetitions too. That's a good thing. That means you're gaining some strength potentially, but you also might be gaining some muscle mass as well. That type of training though, with a lower loading allows for better recovery. Now, you know, metabolically, you're going to wear yourself out, but if you're having nutrition in order, you should be able to recover a little bit better. When you get, when you get those heavier loads, it's harder to recover. Uh, again, if you've done any sort of lifting, you should know that eight sets of three is very different than three sets of eight and how you feel. The volume is the same. Hypertrophy will be the same. If it's two sets, the two reps to fail, assuming that's the same, but how that feels and how you recover and how you can come back the next day or the next day or the next day, you know, assuming some rest periods in there, uh, is going to be affected drastically. And you might see that you accumulate the fatigue a lot faster with those higher loads. All right. In terms of volume range, again, I go back to the American College of Sports Medicine, one set all the way up to however many sets you need. You know, it, it might, you might be now at eight sets and you're not seeing progress on your upper back with the high horizontal pulling. They might need to push it up to nine and 10, right? That's the problem. You can get up to 30 sets. You know, some of these individuals that have been training a long time can, you're trying to knock the body out, out of its homeostasis. And so, you know, you might see some, um, incredible volumes pulled and that's when you have to be wise with your exercise selection and really be on point with your nutrition right in order to be able to recover from these higher volumes in order to see progress okay so add more sets assuming the same you know two to fail three to fail whatever you're at in terms of your reps and reserve um, and that again is, is going to help push up the volume and drive up hypertrophy okay it's it's very very simple i think that the difficulty comes for most of us that that we don't know where to start. Start from where you are now. And it's like looking at your bank account. It's like, I don't know how I became poor this month. Well, if you really looked in your bank account, you see that you, you know, spent $250 on coffee. You didn't realize that. Now you do. Now you have a place to start. Same with your training volume. I, didn't, I don't know why I'm not seeing progress. Well, have you, ever, have you been writing down what you've been doing? Um, have you been using a program, you know, that you can see the volumes changing or not? The answer is no. Then you need to go back and look and say, okay, well, you know, that's, that's, Calculate what I've been doing for the last couple of weeks. And you, again, you might find the volume has plateaued and you didn't even realize it. It's time to push up the volume. Um, if you don't, if you want a maintenance, keep that volume the same. You're happy where you're at. You know, you, you don't have time to push the volume up. Remember, when you push the volume up, it's going to require more recovery. It's going to require more sleep potentially. If you're like, hey, I got a rough patch of work coming up and I'm going to sleep, you know, five hours a night. Uh, and I'm not going to probably be on point with my nutrition. Don't push the volume up during that time. It's not a good time to do that. Keep your maintenance. In fact, you might even see your volume come down a little bit. As long as you keep going though, you should be able to maintenance some of the hypertrophy that you've gained. And then when you have those moments, push up, push up. That's periodization, both 
then a macro cycle, a long cycle, and then a meso cycle from you know from these groups of however we want to group it. Usually, it's typically four weeks at a time. You know, you're seeing volume come up there, but during a maintenance, it just flattens out. No problem. Okay. But in your macro cycle, you start to identify these times. I have clients this all the time, right? I have a heavy workload for these two months. I can't push real hard. No, that's fine. Don't try to do that. And many times in you know the new year, when people start a new exercise routine, they try to keep ramping the volume up, but their life stress has remained the same. And so initially they were down here with their volume. Ah, it's fine. Life stress here, but they start increasing because they're getting stronger and they're seeing results, right? And now they're their training volume goes outside of their ability to recover, their maximal um, recovery volume, right? And so now they start to hit the wall. They start to get frustrated. They start to accumulate fatigue. Exercise becomes something they don't want to do anymore. Uh, and then they fall out. That's just one of the reasons, of course, there's others. But um, that just still gives you an idea of that. Be wise with your volume, okay? I don't have a range for you, per se. Gave you some general ideas. But it, see where you're at now and then just scale up from there and you should start to see uh, progress, assuming that you're in a position that you can uh, add more volume in and recover from it. Okay, hopefully I didn't talk in circles too much. It's a cool topic. Um, it's a little bit, uh, it's too focused on, right? It's simple, progressive overload. That's all we need to do. The, the harder part is tracking it and making sure that we're doing the increases in volume at the right time that we can actually recover.